Hey, I'm Tommy Akers and welcome back to my shop. My last few videos have been on the hydro dip technique where you put water and paint on top of the water and you dip your piece in and it sticks to it and you finish it. And I've had some emails and some comments from people who like for me to just slow that down and really talk through the process. So that's what this video is going to be about, is me actually talking about the process and doing it, uh, or talking about it as I do the process and kind of explain a little more in detail and uh, hopefully you'll learn a little bit better about it and uh, we'll go from there so I'll see you at the end of this. Okay what we have so far this is the piece that I'm going to do today and I have turned it to the shape I want and I've sanded it to 400. Now you have to finish sanding this and turning it because once we dip it, you can't turn it again. You're gonna cut. You're gonna turn your paint off. So this has to be completely to the point where it's finished and ready for a finish coat. Now, obviously, I'm gonna turn this into a bowl, so this is gonna be turned out. It's the purpose I left it on the chuck so that I could put it right back on the lathe and it will index exactly where it was, and I could finish turning this. Now, you can either do what I've done here. I've put a spray paint finish on here of a uh, contrasting color or whatever, and the paint will be stuck to that, or you can leave it natural. But if you leave it natural, your paint's gonna suck deeper into this. And uh, I mean, that's, that's there's good points to that and bad points to that, but if you, you're gonna turn back in here, it might bleed into where you, you are there. But this is what I'm going to do today. Um, you can do it however you want to do it. And the paints I use, this is a white. You can see it's just a rust-oleum enamel. You can use any paint, latex or oil, if it floats on the water. Now, obviously, latex is going to mix with the water. But some tell me you put alum in your water, and that will make the latex float on top of the water. That's all you need. You need a paint that's going to float on top of the water. So you can use aerosol spray cans and spray paint the water and do that. It's just, it's endless to what you can do to this. It's anything that floats on the water and will stick to your wood. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare this and get my water ready and we'll dip this and show you how we go from there. Okay, here's my container. It's got my water in it. You can see my water. Your water only has to be as deep as you want your piece to be dipped. If you just want the surface of the piece dipped and you're not going to go very deep, then you, all you need is a little bit of water in the bottom. Uh, the container can be any size. It can be a little bucket or anything like that. I use this one because I do platters in it and uh, I can get a 14 inch platter in this container. This ain't nothing but a little plastic container with a lid. It cost me like $8. So I didn't spend a whole lot of money on this because I don't, I plan on getting paint all over it and this is all I use it for. And um, you can see where I've used other paints and they've gotten on the sides. Uh, this paint will sit on top of this water after you've done this and just couple of hours or an hour it'll be dry on top of the water and you can just pour it out um, there's not really any cleanup the pieces on the bottom floated to the bottom and I poured the water out and then they dried on the bottom is the reason they're there <clears throat> but like I say you can use aerosols and just spray it on top of the water like that you can I just take these little deals here and put them in. You can thin your paint. This paint right here is a sign paint that you use to do signs. It's still an oil base. It's just a little black we're going to put in here. And you can leave this just like this and stir it around. They do book binding. 
if you can look if you google book binding you can watch them do this the pages that are inside a book are done this way but they do all kind of elaborate details they'll cover the whole surface of the water and they'll take cones and comb patterns in it right, we'll take a little white here my white's going to be a little thicker that's okay Just what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir through this a little bit. You can leave it just like that and dip. It's whatever you want to do. This is, I mean, it's like I say, this is endless to what you can do. You can add more colors and leave more colors out. Me personally, I like to stir things up a little bit. Just kind of make it random. Alright, if you don't like that, you can add some more of another color. And then when you get ready, you're going to want to dip this piece in. You're going to dip it in slow. Just take it and go in real slow with it. Let the paint ride on it. And I'm going to pull it out and we're going to dry it off. And you see it's all blue here. But the other colors are right underneath there. So we're going to take our paper towels and we're going to blot it off. And when we blot this off, all we're doing is getting the thickness of the paint off. We want it as smooth as we can get it. And we don't want to rub, we don't want to rub this uh, paper towel. We just want to blot it. Okay. There's that one. Come over here. Suck up some over here. And as we suck this paint up, you can see the other colors are coming through. Like I say, we're wanting to dry this down as far as we can dry this down. Flatten this out as smooth as we can get it just by blotting paper towels on it. this piece where I want it. The next thing we'll do is we're going to let this dry and uh, we'll probably let this dry overnight. <coughs> it being an oil based paint just takes a little longer to dry. Now if you did an oil, a latex you could probably do this a lot quicker. Is now we're actually we're just getting what water's left on it all. And this part here we're going to turn this out, and this is our lip that's going to stay on the piece. So, all right, we'll let's go ahead and let this dry overnight, and tomorrow we'll come out and finish it up.
Okay, this is it. Uh, what I've done is I sprayed some, uh, well, I, I put the sanding seal on it first, you saw, and I sprayed a polyurethane on this. Now, I will say that you need to test your finishes before you put like a lacquer or something over this. You want to make sure that that lacquer doesn't draw that up or, or you know mess up your finish. So always do some type of test piece until you feel comfortable enough to do it over and over again. There are some aerosols paints that that lacquer will just really just take it up. So always do a test piece before you do this. And you saw that I dyed the bottom here. Uh, I've done that just to, just to see how it would turn out, what it would look like. Um, this is actually two tube of tins glued together. Uh, it's cheap pine. Uh, like I say, I'm just doing test pieces, learning the process, trying to get good at it, and uh, that's what this video is about. What I've learned so far, and you know, hopefully it's helping you some. And uh, there's my rooster crowing. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I hope I answered all your questions. If not, just uh, shoot me a comment or shoot me an email and we'll discuss it a little further. And uh, if you're not subscribed, how about subscribe to my channel and you'll get all the uh, updates and stuff that come out. And uh, Or just give me a like or, like I say, shoot me a comment so that we'll, uh, we can keep communicating and I can learn more from you and you can learn more from me. So. Uh, have a great day and thanks for turning in, tuning in.